FRG Ministry presents the Catholic Influencers Podcast. Join me, Alyssa Aegis, and my co-hosts, Father Rob Gallia and Justine Cumbo, as we break open the upcoming Sunday Mass readings and discuss relevant topics and life issues from a Catholic perspective. For a shorter, more reflective explanation of the Gospels, be sure to check out our sister podcast, Catholic Influencers, Father Rob Gallia Homilies. Well, hello, hello. Welcome to episode four of the Catholic Influencers podcast. Hi. And season eight. Season <laughs> we're, we're, eight. We're like, we're vintage we're here. We're like, eight. Eight. Yeah. I just want to give a shout out to the fourth member of this podcast, which is my grumbling, hum- hungry stomach. <laughs> 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 well, hello. <laughs> I was in a Zoom recently and I'm trying to do this intermittent fasting and I could hear my stomach grumbling. And the person <laughs> on the other end was like, what was that noise? I was like, what noise? I don't know. What noise? It was a dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're, cool. you know, eating your lunch or your dinner while you're listening to this podcast, eat a little extra for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very nice. So why are you intermittent fasting? Like, uh, is look, it a health thing? Look, it's probably the one thing I've been able to stay disciplined to <laughs> in yes. my whole life, ever. So I feel like it's just, um, it's a good practice for me to hopefully extend into other parts of my life. But I was on the bandwagon all through lockdown and then I got off the bandwagon now I'm trying to get on the bandwagon, but I'm crawling yeah. up the bandwagon back onto the ship. I, so. I like intermittent fasting. I often do it. And I, it sort of helps you if you're on a sort of trying to count calories, which we all should do in a sense. It helps you like put more calories in in a less amount of time. Yeah. So, yeah, I can have my bigger meals. My husband loves like... I'm very lucky. He makes me a cafe breakfast every morning. Oh, wow. Like he's, a, he's like a chef. Eh? He's seriously awesome. Hi, Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, if I was to say to him, hey, like, do you think we could do this <laughs> at like a later point of the morning? I don't think he'd be too happy because no. he loves his eggs in the morning. Oh, I love food. Well, I love it, it. you yes. obviously have to do it differently. And We're lucky. I, we don't, I don't have the luxury. And then if I was to say, um, you know, can we do it later? Or he just eats by himself. Like he wouldn't make it for me a second time. Oh. So it's like that. <laughs> you miss out. You miss out <laughs> forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for selfish reasons, <laughs> I will not do intermittent fasting. <laughs> well, I like, I, anyway, I like breakfast. Sometimes I have a protein shake. Sometimes, um, like I always have greens in the morning, you know, like the... Um, Ew, they taste uh, No, I, I'll, I'll tell you later. I don't want to advertise the brand, but there's a brand that tastes really good. All right. Like okay. really good. It's very healthy. I think. Right, we'll chat later. But uh, anyway... <laughs> Then we go for intermittent fasting. So if you're going to intermittent fast, we are not giving any health advice here. <laughs> just <Yeah>. please <laughs> note, we're not encouraging you to do so. We're just uh, saying, what do we do? <laughs> there you go. I don't want to get sued. I don't want to get sued. Like, uh, yeah, if someone faints, passes out or something. Okay, I think what we'll do is we'll go straight to the scripture um, verse. Um, this is a b- <laughs> we're rummaging I'm through. Bi- bi- what's the Bible? If what's you're watching Bible? on YouTube, I've become <laughs> an old lady. This podcast class. didn't happen the way we intended it to. <laughs> no, we had a n- nice small talk. <laughs> twist. Okay, so th- what are we reading today? We're reading it's 1 Timothy yes. 6, 11 to 16. So if you have your Bible as well, I really encourage you to, to grab the Bible to read with us and grab a, a highlighter, a pen. And take some notes as well. This The intention of this uh, podcast is for you to understand the scriptures, but also to be prepared for the Sunday readings. So when you go to Mass, you'll be ready, you'll, be, you'll, know, um, you'll know your stuff, and you can connect it also with the, with the Gospel, which mm. in all probability, your priest will talk about the Gospel. Yeah, and just a reminder that we are breaking open the second reading uh, in this season. Um, so it is, podcast. yeah, 1 Timothy 6, 11 to 16. As a man dedicated to God, you must aim to be saintly and religious, filled with faith and love, patient and gentle. Fight the good fight of faith and win for yourself the eternal life to which you were called when you made your profession and spoke up for the truth in front of many witnesses. Now, before God, the source of all life, and before Christ, who spoke up as a witness for the truth in front of Pontius Pilate, I put I put to you the duty of doing all that you've been told with no faults or failures until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who at the due time will be revealed by God, the blessed and only ruler of all, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal, whose home is an inaccessible light, whom no man has seen and no man is able to see, to him be honour 
and everlasting power. Amen. I always love to give a little bit of context just to kick us off when we start to break open these readings. So the first part of this chapter is dealing with Christian slave masters and false teachers who were using their teaching to make money. So what Paul is doing in this um, part of the reading is he's contrasting this with the ideals that Timothy should pursue. Mm, totally. And um, it's you can sort of see that Paul is kind of taking on this role of coach. You know, he's really coaching Timothy for the battle. And, um, it, you know, with a little bit of context around it, you get um, – you know, we catch a bit of a glimpse that Paul Timothy is probably going through a really tough time. He's been a disciple of Paul, but he's been left alone. And all of a sudden he's confronted with all these difficulties, these people who are opposing him. And he's really tempted to become discouraged um, and indecisive. He's forgotten the zeal of the call and he's probably doubting himself and, and whether he should do this anymore. And for me, as I was reading this, I was like, hmm, this rings a bell. And it sounds awfully a, a lot familiar, like the original tactics of the em enemy that we read in Genesis, you know. And the enemy wants us to question, one, who God is and God's character. And two, and this is what I struggle with, the enemy wants you to question who you are and the call and purpose over your life. And so in this instance, you think, man, the, the devil's gone for Timothy's jugular here and he's really questioning himself and his call and the fruit of questioning in that way questioning who you are questioning God is disheartenment is discouragement and you might listening you might be able to relate to this like oh yeah I, I have felt that when it's come to my the sense of, of call and purpose in this world so Paul is coming in with this letter and he's combating that with the truth and you combat lies with truth and he opens by you know addressing Timothy by his true identity not this lie his true identity which is man of God he's calling him back to the truth and you know what if, if we know God we become that man or woman of God that is what we are identified with and so Paul wants to um, you know reaffirm Timothy's divine call and you know harden him to hearten him not harden him to courageously act upon it um, and I was just like man like this is so cool this scripture just really also highlights for me the importance that we in our lives to have mentors mm. to have people who act as coaches people who know when we've fallen down and who can speak truth over our lives who can challenge us to get up again to say woman of god like get up again this is not who you are or man of god so yeah I, I, paul coaching timothy for battle mentoring him along the, his way of discipleship is, is really powerful and this is what I, I was just thinking even as you said it, how important the role of a spiritual director is. Mm. Like I have a, a, a beautiful spiritual director that's so always so encouraging, so encouraging, uh, reprimanding as well, like would correct me, call me out uh, in certain things. But I, I, his tone, like I always feel, even like even I go to confession and sometimes, you, you know, you go to confession and you feel like sad and you feel like uh, the priest is going to tell me off, this is going <laughs> to be, <laughs> but then you, at least 99.9% .9 of the time I go out feeling, wow, the mercy of God is so much bigger than the condemnation mm -hmm. that I was putting myself in. And this is uh, brought about even by the way the priest c communicates this. And so it's true how we need encouragement, how we need also to call a spade a spade, we need the truth, but also we need to come to a place where we can get up and get uh, get up confidently. And this is what St. Paul is doing to Timothy. He's saying, hey, this is the first thing he addresses him as. He says, hey, man of God, man of God. Mm -hmm. And when you say man of God, it was something big then. You know, the Jesus was son of God, the man of God. And he was telling him that you are a man of God, not because he is God or not because he's anything special, but simply sort of a slap on the face and saying, get over yourself and realize mm. who you are. Mm -hmm. Realize that your identity is in the calling that God has over your life. And what does that mean? That comes and then with a responsibility. Yeah, I love that whole reference to man of God. And when I was studying for this, um, I learned that man of God is a, was an Old Testament title reserved for the big guns, people like Moses, <laughs> David, the prophets in all the key moments. Um, but the title was given to the prophets most frequently when they because they were communicating the Lord's fresh word to the people. It really refers to their prophetic authority. Mm -hmm. um, it's a channel for God's will for his people and for the people's needs um, 
people's needs to God as well. And so again, yes, Paul, let's reiterate this. Paul is reaffirming um, that divine call that that Timothy has. But a really cool image, I think, to think of this. Um, I love this whole coaching and mentorship. You probably wouldn't suspect this about me, but when I was little, <laughs> well, maybe like seven or eight years old, I was AFL football mad. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, see, like I can see it. I'd have thought see soccer it. more Beanie, than anything. The scarf. It, I was AFL, AFL for those the Americans because uh, that's mm-hmm. American football league. But we here yeah, Australian, Australian football. Australian football league. I loved it. I loved. I would go to the matches and I'd be like screaming <laughs> at the players. I knew all the numbers off by heart. Like I had wow, all the collector cards. I loved it, and I, I would go to the games with my family and like. You would see at the quarter time and half time, like the players would stop the game and quarter time they'd go to the the coach just on the field and then half time they'd go into the rooms and like the the coach would be plotting and like really mm. pumping them up, motivating them. I think it, like there's a that's a really great image mm. for this um, reading. I imagine Paul doing that exact same thing mm-hmm. um, with Timothy. Like he's at this pep part, talk, pep like, talk, yeah, like. This is what you're going to do. You're going to go back out there and you're going to do this, this, this. Um, and what are the things that Paul tells Timothy to do? He tells Timothy, Timothy to pursue the following qualities. He talks about righteousness, mm-hmm. devotion, faith, hope, um, and... and Love. Love. No. <laughs> faith, love, faith, and patience. Love and patience. There we go. Um, <laughs> Alyssa has to get everything right. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> As it is. <laughs> Look, I'm just going to own that. It's like one of the things that I do. Love, I love it. Yeah. That's one of the things that I suppose will break up in the rest of them as well. Um, pursue those qualities, compete well for the faith and, and lay hold of eternal life. They're the three things that he says, go for it. Yes, and because these are the consequences of being a man or woman of God. Mm-hmm. Because if you are a woman and of God, a man of God, then you pursue the character of God. Mm-hmm. And God is patient and his love and his charity mm-hmm. and his, his goodness and his piety and his righteous. And so this also, Paul is saying, in, in defining him, in causing him to be identified, and we like to use that word a lot now, to, to identify as something. He's saying, well, you, if you identify as the Son of God, then you're going to act as the Son of God. Mm-hmm. You're going to act like Jesus. Mm-hmm. And that, w- with that comes the, the, the piety and the righteousness before not only God, but before humanity as well, to be able to love, to serve others, to carry out your duty before God and man. Mm. I love that they're the weapons that we're given to fight with, Um, you know, because when you're confronted with a hard situation, um, that's not necessarily my default. It was like, I'm really hurt or I'm really angry. I'm going to respond in love. Like, Mm. no, I want to respond in anger. I want justice for a situation. But no, God is kind of inviting you to put down those weapons um, and, and replace them with devotion, faith and love and patience. And man, like um, there are situations I even know in my life where perhaps I've done something wrong and I'm expecting the worst. I'm expecting that person, like I deserve it. I know I, I stuffed up. I expect them to respond in retaliation or anger and they respond in love and it disarms me. It yeah, completely same. and mm. utterly floors me. And like I, I was expecting the worst and yet the weapon that they fought for me Mm -hmm. with not against me with but they're fighting for me with is actually the character of jesus Mm -hmm. and so yeah i think it's i I found this really cool quote um it's maybe this has already said it but it's much harder to work for truth and unity for human and spiritual solidarity than it is to respond with violence Mm -hmm. our human inclination is to want to respond with a temporary fix i feel good because i was angry and i let it out you know but actually you responding with these weapons of righteousness, of devotion, of faith and love and patience, they're the long view weapons. They're the ones that are going to bear fruit in your life. They're the ones that are going to bring hope in your life and, and, and going to bring about realities that aren't passive but are effective in this world, in transforming this world to, towards Jesus. So it's a training. Yes. Like it's not a quick battle, box it out. It's a long view training. Like keep running, keep using these weapons. And it's a training for, for holiness. Yeah. And I think earlier in this letter, it was actually um, chapter 4, verse 7, Paul is, was telling Timothy to train for godliness. Mm-hmm. And I guess we can say that now Paul's saying this is the time to fight for it and these are the weapons that you should be using. So he also mentions um, spiritual weapons to be used um, in spiritual combat. And we can find these in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 17. He talks about use the armour of God, use the mm. belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, 
the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And something else that I um, discovered, compete well for the faith. The Greek um, translation of this literally says fight the beautiful fight of the faith. And again, as you said, Justine, it's not talking about violence. It's talking about speaking the, the truth in love. Yes, because it is a, it, we need to brace ourselves for, for the difficulty, for the adversity, for the suffering, for the, for the challenges, because it isn't easy, as we often say to follow Jesus, it isn't easy to be righteous, it isn't easy to retaliate um, love when we're faced with hate. It's, it's not easy, but it doesn't come out of a vacuum, uh, out of a vacuum. We have to brace ourselves, prepare ourselves. You see, it's like, again, you're a jar that's overflowing. If, if, if people are going to shake the jar, they're going to get what is on the inside. So if you're filled with living water, that's what people are going to get. If you're filled with poison that's and acid, that's what people are going to get. Mm-hmm. So what are you filling your jar with? And this is what he's telling Timothy. He's saying, hey, fill your jar with righteousness, with peace, with hope, with charity, and with the word of God, with the sword of God, with the shield of truth. Immerse yourself with the word of God so that when this happens, then you come. I noticed it, for example, some time ago, um, when uh, I almost, now my car does it automatically, but before you'd have to slam down the brakes if a car stopped in the traffic. So, um, but um, maybe your car doesn't do it automatically, but somehow <laughs> mine does. <laughs> it slams on the brakes before even I can do it. But, um, I d- and I don't have a Tesla, don't worry. Um, so, but um, w- uh, one time there was a car that stopped immediately in front of me, and it usually I, I, you'd expect like some swear words maybe to come out. But I was saying, I, as I slammed the brake, I kept saying, "Jesus, Jesus, save me! Jesus, save me!" Mm. And I stopped, and like I managed to stop on time. And I thought, "Wow." How beautiful my reaction was, <laughs> was, was something beautiful. <laughs> so it showed me that maybe I was on the right track with filling my heart, filling my jar with the, with the right things. When under pressure, that is where you know what you're filling that jar with. Are you filling it as a daughter of God, as a things worthy of a, of a child of God? Uh, or are you filling it with things of this world, of, with hate and acid and retaliation and revenge? We love revenge. Just look at TikTok. It's all about like getting, g- getting karma and getting the, r- the right thing back. But no, <laughs> Jesus was never on about karma. He was always about retaliating um, evil with good. Mm. Mm. Love it. I need <laughs> more polls in my life. And I think an encouragement is to go and find a mentor, a spiritual director, cannot run this race alone, not even just your friends or just with your family. Find those people who are going to coach you into this good fight. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Encounter by FRG Ministry presents our online subscription package. As a member, you will receive digital on demand access to Encounter's growing library of online courses. Encounter and Encounter Youth online courses cover teaching, devotional, and practical elements of the Catholic faith to help individuals, teachers, students, and parishes across the world grow in their faith and understanding of the Catholic Church and their relationship with Jesus Christ. Current titles include Knowing Mary, School of Prayer, Introduction to the Bible, The Mass and more, with new courses being added regularly. All Encounter courses include high-definition videos with expert and engaging speakers, testimonies from everyday Catholics, and downloadable content including interactive PDF guides, prayer cards and wallpapers. These courses are also accredited for professional development for Catholic education staff in Australia. All Encounter Youth courses include teaching videos, interactive student and teacher PDFs with lesson plans and guided prayer and reflection. For more information about enrolment and subscription options, head to www.encountercourses.com slash subscription. Be sure to follow us on social media on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Encounter Courses. The truth hurts. Ouch. Ay caramba. Mm. <laughs> We've been talking a lot in this reading about um, standing up for the truth and in going out. I you know sometimes I think, so many times I've said to myself, all right, I wish I could just be a hermit and just like hey. go and live on a mountain and just pray. But no, we're called to be on the battlefield. And sometimes that calls us, we need to speak out in truth. And we live in a world at the moment where the lines can get very blurry. Mm. Yeah, and speaking of truth, as I was reflecting, it's like we kind of live in a smog right now. It's, c- it 
it's really blurry and blurs your vision and suffocates you of half truths or mistruths or you know subjective truth like you do you boo but don't you dare tell me anything that goes against what I believe because if you do then you're a bigot it's this yes. really corroded idea of what truth is where truth is not truth it's anything and that goes against the very definition of what it what it is yeah, and the, what's the difference between subjective and objective? You know, there are things that are subjective. We as human beings are subjective because we change, our circumstances change, we grow, we, we, um, our uh, beings change. But you see, we live in a subjective world also that grows and changes, but there and there are these eternal truths that, that remain the same. The way we apply them to our lives sometimes changes, but sometimes it doesn't. And th the thing is, we're so used to the world changing and, and bowing its head for us that we expect God to do the same for us. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't do that, you see. The world can bow to us, yes. The world, things around us can bow, we, especially in a world of comfort where we want things to be as we like them. But God will not do that for us. Mm. God is not going to bow his head, bow his truth, because it makes us uncomfortable, because it's offensive to us. Mm. And we need to understand this. We need to understand. And it's sometimes really, really hard as a representation of the truth of God to tell the world this, to explain the, this to the world. Mm. And makes us look uh, bad in a sense, but at, at the end of the day we have to do it. And this is, mind you, this is not a new reality. This has always mm. been the truth, okay? Mm. There's always been people who, who repelled the truth of Christ. Yeah, I found a really cool quote when I was um, researching for this. It's by Flannery O'Connor. It says, the truth does not change according to our ability to stomach it. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was pretty powerful. But I guess we, because of the culture we live in, we can be afraid to speak the truth. And mm -hmm. a couple of reasons why we could be afraid, and I'm sure we've all experienced this at some point in our lives, cancel culture obviously mm. in the world of social media the minute you say something that offends one person you're cancelled it's crazy um that can make us afraid of speaking the truth but we're also scared of um offending not just offending general people but offending people that we love and we hang out with all the time and we can be scared of losing friends and is anyone gonna like me there's so many reasons why we can be um yeah, afraid to speak the truth. Mm. And I don't know if any of the listeners can relate, but I certainly know that there have been situations in my life where it feels like a spotlight is on you. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, the conversation is shifted and you're asked to say something that goes against the just sort of the easy majority and it feels like a spotlight's on you and you kind of start sweating and you're like what will I say or will I dumb it down or will I water it down? Um, and it can be really hard and I'm not saying I'm I definitely I'm not saying I'm perfect at this but um, I was just reminded of the scripture in John 8 23 that the truth will set you free and oftentimes we blur the truth in a situation because it frees us for that moment it's a mm -hmm. temporary escape mm -hmm. it's not freedom it's a temporary escape from a situation that would be otherwise confronting or could ensue some kind of backlash and so we water it down so we can escape but really it doesn't set us free it, it, it in fact binds us when we walk away internally and so um, it's just this challenge but reminder that it's only the truth that will set you free it's only speaking or living in the truth that's going to set you truly free and also the truth setting us free also has starts with listening to the truth mm. how many of us like I, I speak for myself as well here is like w when i i notice myself sort of faded away from god like i've sinned or i've done something or maybe i didn't do something i know i should have done and i find it difficult to pray i find it difficult to listen to the lord and what do i do i say look um, I'll, 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 I sort of deplete my prayer, I deplete my listening time with the Lord. And then I wait, I'll say, when I go to confession, and then I have the time to go to confession, then I'll come back to prayer. But you see those, po those moments in your life where you, ru or you are running away from the truth, you're running away from the freedom, because God, even in our sin, okay, we especially, wants to also work with us, speak to us, and give us truth in those moments, and give us freedom as well if we're in our sin running away from God running away from the presence of God 
then we're running away from, from the freedom that God wants us. And the freedom comes with knowing God's justice, that God wants us to metanoia, to turn away from our sin. But the great news is that he's going to give us the grace to do it, mm-hmm. the strength to do it, the way to do it. And when we find that way, when we find and we cooperate with God, we partner with God, then we're going to find freedom. Yeah, and I mean, I'm... I was drawn to um, Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 to 12 in the Beatitudes. Jesus says this. He says, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus knew that it was going to be difficult and Mm -hmm. that we were going to feel uncomfortable and that people might laugh at us and call us a liar. But at the end of the day... um, Jesus went through it and I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I think that's like it's, a, it's a John 15 thing like yeah. or 16, like maybe. Remember that the world hated me first. He has been there already. And yes. we mm-hmm. have evidence of that obviously in the cross, but in everyday ways, like not just in the cross. Like it was the way Jesus lived every day that got him to the cross, you exactly. know, and every day as um, confronting as it might be, but we shouldn't cower away in fear because there's a lot of truth and goodness that come and meaning that comes from living this life of true freedom and sometimes sacrifice because that's what Jesus calls us to. But um, Jesus asks us daily in our internal lives, but also in our external lives, not just in our external lives, because we can definitely hide a lot in the cave of my soul, Mm -hmm. um, to take our place at his side. You know, to stand next to him in in the place of unconditional truth and absolute integrity. Yes, and the ultimate truth as well comes through holding on to the cross. You know, like Jesus, the truth will set you free. Just think about the cross, you know, the truth, the cross, which is the most place you'd want to let go of. But he held on to the cross, and because he held on to the truth of the cross, then he was set free through the resurrection and set us free. And when he tells us to pick up our cross, like you were saying, every day, this is it. Pick up your cross. The, no one wants to pick up a cross. Who would want to pick mm-hmm. up a cross? But sometimes the, the truth hurts. It does hurt. Mm-hmm. It hurts to stay close to the cross. It hurts to stay close to the truth when we don't understand it, when we sometimes don't believe it, when it's going to offend even the people we love. But again, it's about truth and truth doesn't change and the truth is going to staying away from the truth is going to destroy us if we don't Mm. yeah i was just going to also add that this is a call for everyone we're all called to pick up our cross and stay close to the truth it's not just a call for some people so don't leave it up to the the major voices to kind of do this we're all called to do this and imagine if we all played our part in this role imagine the knock-on effect of that um and even something that we said in the last in the in the last episode you might be like what if you're the only gospel that someone sees like you might be the only voice that someone hears for them to fully encounter the truth Mm -hmm. and don't assume don't make someone's um don't assume someone's response don't make their decision of how they will react to you for them because I think often I work for a Christian ministry right (laughs) and whenever anyone asks me in any varying context that I could ever be asked um, sometimes I'm like oh what are they gonna say don't assume that people actually generally don't mind when I tell them what I do some Mm -hmm. people are like oh that's nice good for you move on Um, but other people ask more questions but I was also um, just quick reflecting as you were speaking if I lack confidence in what I'm saying you know, that I'm proud to work for what I work for. What, what message am I communicating about Christians? Mm-hmm. That I'm shaky and nervous anytime someone will ever find out what I do. No, like I can be confident in the work that I do. I am proud of the work that I, I wholeheartedly believe in the work that I do. So when I share it, I want to share it with joy and not in a patronizing confidence, but that is a witness to other people of, whoa, there's Christians out there mm. who love what they're doing. They're unafraid to, to exactly. share that with joy mm-hmm. and they didn't irritate me when they said it. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. And this is what, again, we're called to stand up for the truth, to listen to the truth, to proclaim the truth. And that is what is going to set us free. We'll hear from our, our sponsors. Delight in the arrival or gifting of a beautiful Modern Grace subscription box containing Catholic items thoughtfully put together to inspire, encourage and help you grow deeper in your faith. Available on a subscription plan and automatically delivered to your door every three months. 
Little Box of Light gift boxes will fill you with hope and inspiration to follow Jesus in your everyday life. Each box is of similar value and will contain a minimum of four items ranging from inspiring Christian reads, devotions, journals, gentle encouragement to bring you back to prayer, home, office, decor, to serve as a reminder of God's presence, scripture-themed products to express your faith and self-pampering. Share your faith with others by gifting them something from your box or an entire subscription. These make beautiful gifts for Catholic women, men, children, and families. Subscribe today at www.moderngrace.com forward slash subscription. Definitely grab yourself a subscription box from Modern Grace. So many amazing products. Um, well, that brings us to the end of this episode four of season eight. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, be sure to follow us online, social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You can find all of those links at our website, frgministry.com forward slash podcast. Um, and if you want to watch the video, you can see us on youtube.com forward slash frgministry. Yeah. Also, check out, um, send us questions. We want to know your questions. We want to answer your questions. This is the, um, not us just talking to you, but we want to hear from you as well. Podcast at frgministry.com. Thank you so much. We will see you again next week for episode five. Have a great week. See you, beautiful people. God bless. Bye.